This series is sponsored by Linode. Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable to host your own app, site or project in the cloud. Whether you're a Linux power user or just a beginner, you can use Linode. You can start from scratch and fully customize your server for any application or use Linode's one-click apps to deploy game servers, WordPress websites, personal VPNs and much more. You can even upload and run your own image. You can get $20 free on your new Linode account with the code HACKESPLOIT20 or by clicking the link in the description. That is linode.com forward slash HACKESPLOIT. Hey guys, welcome back to the Linux Essential series for hackers. In this video, we're going to be covering how to use the Find tool and we'll also be taking a look at some challenges on Over the Wire Bandit, uh, more related to what we're taking a look at in this video, which is how to correctly utilize the Find command to look for files or directories within your system. So an extremely, uh, you know, very useful tool that uh, will really help you save time when looking for particular files. And I'll be showing you how to use it right now most efficiently. So again, we can use the what is utility to find out more information about the tool so again it tells you that this uh, this tool allows you to search for files and uh, in a directory hierarchy uh, you can also check out the man pages for this particular tool and again you can go through all of this if you want to i'm going to be covering all uh, the uh, the information that is necessary or that will make you the most efficient with this tool all right so let's get started let's stop wasting time so using the tool is very simple we say find and then after saying find we need to specify uh, the directory we want to uh, we want to search in so again we can specify the current directory that we are currently in uh, by you know using the full stop or the dot uh, or we can specify the entire Linux file system directory which is done by using a forward slash like so as you would when navigating directories uh, or I can specify an individual directory that I want to uh, that I want to search in so I can say home Alexis which is pretty much the directory we're working in so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search the entire Linux file system directory, which if you're going to do, you do require root or pseudo privileges. Otherwise, you'll not be able to access uh, files and directories that, you know, you do not have adequate permissions to access. So I will also add the sudo command here. Um, so again, we're going to find files within the Linux file system directory. We then specify uh, the other bit of information that uh, will help us fine tune our results, which is, of course, going to be the type that we're dealing with. So the type uh, in regards to the find command is very simple. It simply refers to what you're dealing with. So uh, are you looking for a file or a directory? And that can be denoted by either using F for file or D for directory. In our case, we're looking for a file. So we're just going to hit file. All right. So very simple. Next, we specify the other variable that again will help us fine tune our search results and is very important, which is the name. So what is the name of the file you're looking for? So I can say uh, proxy chains and I know I'm using the same example, but again, I'll, I'll show you how robust this is in a second. So I can say proxychains.conf. And after this, I can pretty much hit enter. Now, the important thing to note here is that I can use uh, the grep command in conjunction with find to, you know, pipe output and specify configuration files by themselves, uh, similar to what we looked at when we we're taking a look at the locate tool. Uh, so I can just hit enter. And you can see we found the configuration file and uh, we didn't have adequate permission for some files, which is perfectly fine. Um, so that's how to use the find tool. And I've shown you the various parameters you can use. So you can specify the type, uh, the name, uh, which I'll show you how to how robust it can be in a second. So let's take a look at the same example. So I'm just going to say find. Um, and, I, you know, we can just say sudo, uh, we'll sudo find. Uh, and we say the type is going to be a file uh, which you can also change to directory if you are looking for a directory so for example I can say uh, directory and then I can say name um, and the name is going to be Alexis look for the directory Alexis and I hit enter and the UI tells us oh we have uh, various uh, directories here so we can see we have um, we have the home directory here and a few other files here that uh, have actually popped up from my external hard drive which I don't think are that important uh, but there you go. Uh, that just shows you how robust this tool is in regards to, you know, looking for particular files. So you can change that up. So so let's go back to our previous example. So I'm just going to say the name is going to be proxy chains. Now, I'd, I'd mentioned in the previous video, the, uh, the case sensitivity, which is quite important. So if you are uh, performing a search uh, in which you do not want any case sensitivity, you use the I name command instead of the name command. And then after this, you can say, I can say Alexis, for example, and of course uh, it will ignore all of the cases here. So I can, you know, I can combine it with whatever upper case, uh, up and lowercase uh, characters I want, and I'll still get, uh, I'll still get the same results. Um, and I can just hit enter, 
and uh, this time again it gave us uh, the same results but uh, it gave us different results because we are looking for a file so if we change this into a directory here you can see that it's going to give us the same results that we had in the in the initial run when we we're looking for uh, you know directories uh, called alexis so that's how uh, robust this tool is so i talked about using um, uh, using extensions which is again very very simple so Let's say we are looking for extensions and we're looking for all uh, conf files which uh, belong in the Etsy directory. So I'm just going to say Etsy and we've, we've narrowed it down. Uh, we can say name is going to be, I can say, um, uh, we can just say conf and we'll use the wildcard. Uh, so I say conf, we'll just use the same configuration file extension. Uh, and then I can say grep and then I specify the name of the file, right? So, uh, you know, I can hit enter and this is going to display all the configuration files within the Etsy directory. But again, I have to specify the, uh, the file specification here and I'm going to hit enter. And there you are. So it gives you all the configuration files. So very simple tool to use. Now let's talk about uh, the other variables that you can use to specify uh, that will uh, help you fine tune your, your search results. And that is by specifying the size of the file and the permissions. All right. So again, we can just use a simple example. I'm just going to say find and I'm going to say um, we'll say type and that's going to be you don't really need to specify the type if you don't want to it's just there to help you fine tune your results so I can perfectly ignore it if I know what I'm looking for uh, precisely I can then say uh, you know name and the name is going to be proxy chains I can say proxy chains dot conf you know I have the whole name and then I can say size I'm looking for a file with a particular size so I can then use uh, the various options I have so I can say it's going to be plus one megabyte, which can be done like so, uh, or I can, you know, I can say plus 100 megabytes, whatever I want to say. So in this case, let me just say plus one megabytes and hit enter. And uh, well, we're getting uh, various permission uh, errors here. And that's because we'll just say Etsy, hit enter, and I will say sudo. And uh, there we are. And we got uh, no results at all. I just wanted to, to actually provide it with the adequate, uh, the adequate permissions uh, so that I can show you that uh, if we use, uh, you know, um, if we use parameters like the size and we specify it down to, to, to the actual size of the file, we can sort of uh, fine tune our results very, very, uh, to a very deep granular level. So if I just, um, let's say, um, let's see, and I can then grab proxy chains conf and um, I hit enter here. You can take a look at, uh, let me just change this to uh, human readable format. So you can say it's about uh, four kilobytes here. And uh, we can then, you know, you can specify the size depending on, on how you want it. And I'll get back to this uh, when we'll be taking a look at the, uh, the over the wire bandit challenges, because that's where I, I really want to showcase the power of the fine tool. Let's talk about permissions before we actually get started with uh, the over the wire bandit challenges. And permissions are very simple to, to actually specify here. I'm going to be covering, you know, users and groups when we'll be taking a look at that example. But let's talk about uh, permissions first. So permissions allow you to find, again, uh, files that have particular permissions. Very, very straightforward here. So, you know, I can say, um, let's say I create a file. Go into my desktop here and I'll say touch alexis.sh. You know, just a simple shell script or a bash script here. Hit enter and I say chmod. 400 alexis.sh and I hit enter and then I say find within uh, the home directory. I can then say, uh, let's say we're looking for a file. Uh, type is going to be a file. We don't have a name, but we have permission. So I can say perm. L let's look for, uh, let let's look for files with the permission of uh, 400, which means, um, which means that the 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 owner or the user can read the file, um, but the uh, the group and uh, all other users on the system are not able to access it. So, again, uh, that should give us uh, a few results, but we don't have adequate permissions uh, for the other files. So you can see we get the result right over here. So you can use permissions to help fine tune your search results and get the exact results you're looking for. Uh, you know, we can also specify 744, we hit enter, and uh, it looks like we had a few files with those particular permissions, but uh, nothing, uh, no, no important files that we, uh, that, that don't have the correct permission. So you can see that this can help you find uh, files on your system that have incorrect permissions, and then you can rectify them, uh, you know, li like so, instead of going manually and checking for their permission. So very useful tool. Now that we've taken a look at how to use the tool, uh, let's take a look at how to implement it in some challenges. And that's what we're going to do in the next step, which is the over the wire challenges. So you can follow along if you want to, and I'll see you there.
All right, so we are back on Over the Wire and I'm currently on the Bandit uh, on the Bandit web page here. And uh, you, you can get access to this challenge by following the instructions on level zero. Uh, the levels we're interested in are going to be levels four, five, uh, or level four to, uh, to level four to level six. So again, we'll just go to level four here. And I currently have access and I've solved uh, the challenges uh, all, uh, all, all up till uh, level four so we can get started. All right. So uh, you can see that uh, level four pertains uh, actually finding a file. So you can see the password for the next file. Uh, for the next level is stored in the in the only human readable file in the in here directory uh, tip if your terminal is messed up you can try the reset command and again it gives you the various commands that you can use to solve this level so again let's go back into our terminal as you can see i'm currently on bandit 4 and uh, we can list the files within this home directory and you can see we have an in here directory so let's uh, you know let's go in here and let's see what's going on uh, so if we list the files here, you can see we have various files. And if I if I try catting one of these uh, one of these files, you can see that um, uh, sorry, let's specify that hyphen there. Uh, let's say file zero zero. We can hit enter, and you can see it has a various uh, it has various pieces of uh, data. And it, uh, of course, our job is to look for files within this in here directory that have uh, human readable data. So again, what we can do is we can use the find command here uh, to actually find, uh, you know, the various files that have human readable data. So I can say uh, in this current directory and uh, we are looking for, um, we can actually just say find. And then in this directory, uh, we're looking for the type uh, with, it's going to be a type of file here. And then we can grab the output or we can pipe the output, sorry. And then we can use the xargs uh, command here to look for, um, I believe it's uh, if we just expand this, uh, let's take a look at how to use Xcogs one more time. Uh, we wanted to display uh, the file read items from a file uh, instead of standard uh, standard input. Uh, and uh, yeah, this if we type in file, that should tell us the files that we're dealing with. All right. And this will help uh, shorten the process. So let's go back in here. Uh, so we say file and hit enter and as you can see it tells us that in file 07 we have some ascii text however in all the other files we have data so again we can access this file now we can just cap the contents of this file and we should get the password to the next level all right excellent so we can copy this let me exit and we'll go to bandit level 5 here and we'll hit enter we'll just paste in the password and we can get started now all right so let's take a look at what a challenge uh, or level five uh, pertains so again it says the password for the next level is stored in a file somewhere under the in here directory and has uh, all of the following properties it's human readable um, okay all right it's going to be a human readable file um, 10 33 bytes in size and is not executable all right so that's uh, an option these are all the, the these are all parameters that we'll have to specify to some extent so let's actually get started so uh, these are going to be in the in here directory so we'll just go into the in here directory and you can see we have uh, other directories within this so we're going to just say find uh, and we're going to say type is going to be a file uh, we were told that we have uh, it's going to be human readable so we can use xargs there uh, size, I showed you how to specify size. Now, the uh, the thing about specifying size uh, in bytes is if we just take a look at, um, if we take a look at the, at the find tool and we just uh, grip for some for size, you can see that it tells us the size does not count interact blocks, uh, etc. So size one megabyte is not equivalent, uh, is not equivalent to size. So if you're specifying it in bytes, you need to specify uh, the actual number and then the C here. All right, so that's what we have to do. So um, we we'll just go back in here and we go to type a file and then we say size is going to be 1033C. And then after this, um, we're supposed to, uh, we're suppo the file is not, uh, is not executable. So we can then use the logic um, operators here. So we're going to say not executable and executable is another parameter you can specify. And then we can use xargs here and we're going to say file and hit enter. And you can see it tells us um, that maybe here 07 and file 2 has some ASCII text with very long lines. All right, so let's cut uh, the content of this file and just get it. Uh, we're just going to hit enter here and we have the password. So let's exit and go on to the final level in this particular video. So I'm going to 
uh, going to level six, hit enter, and I'm going to paste the password in here. And uh, we can now take a look at what level six pertains. Uh, so level six, the password for the next level is stored somewhere on the server and has all uh, of the following properties. So yeah, this is now where we have the user and group specifications, which is really simple. So again, we're told to look for a file uh, on the entire server uh, owned or in the, the entire Linux file system that is owned by the user bandit seven and is owned by the group bandit six and in 33 bytes in size. All right, so we can then say um, it's on the entire server. Do we have any files here? No, we don't. So we can say find, and uh, we're looking for a user, which is going to be bandit seven, and a group, which is again, very easy to specify. Group is going to be bandit six. Um, uh, the particular file we're looking for is going to be 33 uh, bytes, so 33C. Um, I think that's pretty much it uh, in regards to the options or the parameters that we were given. So let's actually see if we can find this file. I'm going to hit enter and uh, we get various, uh, you know, permission denied errors here. And uh, it looks like we get a password file here. So that's under the var folder or the var directory and it's a bandit seven password. So let's copy the directory to that and the actual file path, the relative file path and cat the contents of that and we get the password to the next level. And I'm just gonna hit exit and we can move on to bandit level seven, which is now uh, is, is going to pertain to another challenge, which is out of the scope of this video. So again, let me know what you guys think of uh, actually going through over the wire uh, bandit challenges and sort of explaining how to use the various tools I'm showing you how to use. And uh, maybe I'll use it in the next uh, in the next videos we're talking about over the wire. If you want me to make individual videos on over the wire, let me know in the comment section and I'll be seeing you in the next video.